has provided a lot of information. And this has been changing all the way through. Um, and, and still today, we, Jenny and I, kind of laugh and chuckle a little bit. Is like we have no idea how an on-call firefighter actually gets to utilize the ESST time. Um, it's 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 clear they get to earn it by the statute, but how do they actually get to utilize it? Because the call goes out, um, they either respond or they don't. <laughs> So, um, so things that it want, at, at one point in time after legislation had passed um, this uh, statute, um, it was unclear whether elected officials would get it. And then there became a little bit more clear, clarity later on. So uh, you're absolutely right. There, there, there's going to be an evolution onto this. And I, and I believe, because uh, you're absolutely correct, Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul, Bloomington, and Duluth have had ordinances, um, you know, on the same type of ESST time for, for a number of years. And um, I, I believe Duluth, um, I, I believe their ordinance, I, I think, excludes um, some of the categories that are now different underneath the state statute. So there's going to be some changes that are going to occur for, for them. Um, and even their number of hours is different um, than the 48. I believe it's 40 on their on their piece to it. So this is going to be an evolution. It's going to be something that's going to change. I think overall, um, I, 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 I guess I see where the intent of this was. And again, I go back to, you know, that article last night. You know, to think of one third of the workforce um, doesn't have the time. And um, you know, that they get paid for, I mean, is kind of, to me, is, is um, unbelievable. Um, but yes, I, I think we've, uh, we've done a pretty good job of, of trying to incorporate the state statute into our existing um, policy, uh, making sure that, um, you know, all of the expanded usage is, is clear and, and, um, and how to utilize it. But obviously the proof comes in when, when employees start utilizing it and for managers to understand it and, and yeah, we'll be, we'll be talking to the attorney quite a bit. I, mm -hmm. I think it looks great. You're clear with what's happening. I've done this for 10 years. Um, but I will say the only thing that I am not a hundred percent clear on, I would just ask for a little bit of clarity. And this comes from me and my, what I do on a daily basis too. How does this coincide with FMLA? Because all of this is a little bit with FMLA as, as well. So just keep that in the back of your head. No, I think that's a that's a very good suggestion. Yeah, uh, and again, there's kind of clarity that we're a little bit uncertain. Right. So yeah, any any wisdom you can pass our way. Yeah, I great I way. need it just as well. We all work together. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. but yeah, I, there's there's something that goes along with it. But just keep okay. that in mind as you move forward with working on leaves with your employees as well. Sure. Hey, Dan, have you calculated the financial liability to the, to the city for this, and have we accounted for it in the budget? Um, that's, a, that's a very... You don't very, think it's a ton of money? It's a, it's a very good question. So if one looks at it from the standpoint that we're giving 96 hours... I'm going to just look at it from a full-time standpoint, that we're giving 96 hours of sick today, we haven't changed that at all. Right. Um, it's basically the usage, and so how do we how do we determine does this increase the usage of sick? And then one can look at it and say, if sick increases, um, for the most part, um, with the exception I would say of our police department, um, we don't backfill. So it's kind of like a, I call it a gray cost. The cost is going to be there the same. We haven't increased any of our costs. What I would say is we've lost some sort of productivity okay. um, for that. Now, if the usage, and that's something that we need, to, you know, that we need to report periodically back to the city council um, to see how this has changed things. If all of a sudden this comes to the certain point where the usage has changed so dramatically, and that we are um, seeing a lot of overtime, again, the police is probably the one area that we would see the most. And or we get to the point where all of a sudden we have uh, department heads saying, I need additional FTEs because I'm losing so many hours um, from, from staff in their utilization. I don't believe that that's going to occur. Um, yeah, there definitely can be some circumstances in which um, that um, 
you know, that we may um, lose an employee for an extended period of time underneath the expanded usage. But then again, I look at it as I really would like to have had that employee for, for, for the expanded uses out um, in dealing with um, those issues. But those are things that we'll end up reporting back to city council, um, you know, kind of showing a history of uh, past um, sick usage versus how that looks moving into the future. Does our current sick policy allow for carryover year on year? Um, it yes, does. it does. Okay. Yeah. Up to how many hours? Um, I believe it's a thousand for most employees and twelve hundred for department heads. Okay, so it's in excess of what? So how do we handle that upon termination or exit? Is that something that gets paid out, or is that something that you don't get capitalized on? Um, there, Again, I'm going back to the financial liability. No, 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 it's not, no, 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 oh, no, very, very good. Um, I believe you have to have ten years of employment in the city, and then it's capped. But under this, range. under this new law. If they can carry over their 80 hours and they're termed or choose to go elsewhere, is the city liable for paying out the 80 hours? Uh, no, they would have. No, yeah. Okay. Underneath the policy, see, if we would ha if we would have chosen um, the option of front loading 48 hours, then we would have had to pay them that 48 um, hours. We haven't chose to do that. It's all about um, the dollars. I'm good. Absolutely. And that's, you know, I, I don't want to say that that was part of the reason that as we were working through this, that that crossed my mind, <laughs> but it did <laughs> as the finance director, uh, of course. So, but yeah. Thank you. Anything else? I think that's it. Thank you very much. All right. And this item will be on the consent agenda. Um, again, and if you have any other questions, we certainly can, can address them at that point in time. But I thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. Next up is uh, community center discussion. Um, I know we have three new members on the council that uh, haven't been involved with the community center as much. So I just want to give you a kind of a brief history and where we're at right now. <clears throat> so North St. Paul Community Center was built in the early 1990s for a cost of $2.4 million. The location was selected because we own the land across the street from the Public Works building. And uh, since the city owned the property, they decided to put the community center there. It was opened in 1992. Uh, the building was imagined to be a kind of a central hub for the community, offering meeting spaces and fitness areas for residents and surrounding community. Um, other than the original purchase price, the city didn't keep um, good records as far as the maintenance cost or labor costs, uh, equipment purchases. Um, in a separate fund account. So it's difficult to recreate the financial statements on this. What they did was they just kind of did internal transfers from mostly the electric department into the general fund and then it was just taken care of. Um, so in 92, when the facility opened, we had uh, two full-time employees down there. We had a director and kind of an admin assistant position. In 2003, um, well, in the early 2000s, the city started to hone in on the financials due to the exorbitant costs of running it. Um, th different programs were tried to see if they could branch out and get some more people involved in the community center. Um, agreement with the Ramsey County Library was signed on May 21st, 2003. Um, and ever since 2003, um, up until it went to a private place to run a business, the rates were increased each year trying to get more income for the building. 2004, facility renovations started. Um, locker rooms, gym, new equipment, addition to the library. Um, declining participa participation um, was already starting to happen. A report from October of that year shows uh, 60 pe 68 people entered the facility uh, through the month. Um, also in 2005, a snack and coffee shop was added into the effort to attract more traffic into the building. Um, 2007, guidelines issued for noise and cleanliness standards. So what happened was people would rent the meeting rooms and they would get excess noise from the workout area and the gymnasium. So there were some issues with um, having the meetings in there. Um, 2008, uh, there were internal memos forecasting savings for by closing the facility, but even an estimated cost of closing it was twenty to forty thousand dollars just to keep the lights on, keep the 
minimal amount of heat in there in the wintertime. 2009, the membership count was down to 399. Um, a focus group was studied and uh, conducted a SWOT analysis of the building. Um, pointed out strengths being the library, kind of the atmosphere, uh, facility, and opportunities with the library. The kind of the weaknesses were marketing, operation hours, offerings, um, facility, and kind of unkept meeting rooms. The membership data from 2009 um, just kind of shows that it was not highly used by residents of North St. Paul. Um, just the yearly resident for family membership was at 4%. Uh, yearly resident for individual memberships was at 16% or 71 people. Um, and even the senior yearly resident individual membership was at 4% as well. In 2011, staff reductions um, were made in, in an effort to save funding. Um, collaboration with the City of Maplewood happened. They had some programs that we worked jointly with them on having in, in using some of the meeting rooms. Uh, financial issues addressed by cutting services um, and operational expenses. The city was looking for options to remove the cost burden from the city's taxpayers. The 2011 change in staffing and the park and recreation collaboration um, have made community center operations less dependent on the general fund subsidy, but expenses continue to far outweigh revenue when all subsidies to the community center are taken into account. Into account. So of that first graph, that's about a little over $309,000 that it cost, and that doesn't include the utility cost, which was another $142,000 for that year. Um, so as you can see, the uh, about 73% um, of the total costs or expenditures were $452,000, while income was only at $123,000. In 2011, revenue from the community center would not cover utilities and janitorial charges, much less cover the expenditures of running the operation. The community center in 2011 operated at a $329,000 deficit. That 2011 deficit was subsidized by um, taxpayers um, supporting the general funds and uh, city electric funds. In 2012, membership count was down to 380 people Less than 5% were residents of North St. Paul, despite efforts of memberships um, remain stagnant. We tried different things over the years. Like I said, we kind of went joint with Maplewood for a while. We, uh, they brought in uh, kind of an interactive exercise equipment, uh, the X-Arcade for a while, trying to um, boost membership, but spent 60000 on that approximately to uh, try to get more people in there. Unfortunately, it, it didn't uh, make a big difference. Community center services identified as non-essential and not core services uh, the city must provide. So less than, again, 5% of residents regularly use the community center. Survey identified the preferred, they preferred the library over the fitness area and meeting rooms as more essential. Competition from other fitness facilities um, had caused a decline in membership. In 2013, the city programming ended. Um, the facility was leased to District 622. Um, that just lasted a year. In 2014, the lease was ended, and that's when the hockey school came in and began to lease the building, and that rolled into um, Kokoro Volleyball in 2018 for use of the building. Um, even up till now, we kind of just did a quick review for utilities of the building. So in 2021, um, strictly electric and gas, this doesn't include water or sanitary. Um, that cost was $62,000. Um, 2022 had a little over $81,000. Kind of depends on the winter. You get those cold spells and you get the higher gas costs. Um, electric stays pretty constant. Um, 2023, so far this year through November, we're at close to $54,000. Uh, in 2020, um, we got proposals for to purchase the building. Schiffskies was one of them, Kokoro was the other. Uh, the city wanted to 
keep the building and the property uh, for their own use, so they declined the uh, purchases. In 2022, we hired Wold Architects um, to retain it for conducting a facility review. Uh, we had roof repairs of $35,000, which was kind of a band-aid to get us through to this year. Um, unfortunately, we weren't able to get that roof fixed yet this year. Um, Council approved resolution in support of keeping the community center and seeking funding. Public comment gathered, hosted at the city hall on uh, July 28th of 22. Residents spoke in favor of having senior and youth activities there. Residents expressed concern about not being able to afford tax increases for the project. Um, in that meeting, we had maybe 30 to 35 people that showed up for it. About a third of them were children. In 2023, we did an outreach and got lobbyists looking for some bonding money. Um, estimated cost that we kind of came together was about 2.3 to 4.5 million approximately for what we would need to get the building back up on its feet again. Not 23 and 40? That's a misprint, sorry. Thank you. I yep. choked really hard when I read that. Yep. <clears throat> uh, so the idea was to have the community center just kind of be a community hub, uh, safety area for youth, a uh, place for veterans and seniors, kind of a multicultural center, if you will, demonstrate hub showcasing city commitment to sustainability. Uh, the city was aborted, or was awarded um, bonding money to refurbish the community center of $4.5 million. Uh, Wold Architect created a detailed facility plan outlining building repairs and grouping them by priority to better manage the project costs. Uh, the focus, focus group interviewed early in 2023 interviews were conducted with a variety a wide variety of local groups responses were mixed with many groups speaking out about the possibilities and other focusing on the tax burden of the project other issues raised were um, including security staffing costs uh, location and parking People mentioned uh, potential uses for the building, but many were not in favor of having to pay for the spaces um, and or did not have the budget available for adding expenses. Kind of historical notes, notes over the past two decades, much of the deferred maintenance on the building was pushed out due to cost where they were trying to save money, but now that put us in the position that we're in now where the building needs extensive upkeep. Um, facility kind of had a history of security issues uh, during its administration. Um, the city experienced several police calls for unruly youth and vagrants. That's probably not much different than any community center. Um, now with the granting the grant money, the city will need to make decisions on the facility in light of the grant funding made available to the city from the state of Minnesota and potentially the federal government. There is potentially a $800,000 grant that we may receive from the federal on top of that 4.5 from the state. Um, so some of the things that we're going to have to kind of focus on and figure out now is fully understand the terms of the grant and how they impact the city's commitment to the programming and management of the facility. For instance, um, one thing we did find out that once you take the money and start investing into the building, you are committed to that building for 20 years after that point. Um, fully understanding maintenance costs to rehabilitate the building as well as to ensure its proper maintenance in the future. Fully understand staff needs from the city to manage program and maintain uh, the facility. Um, fully understand the tax levy impact of the reimagined facility. Fully understand the impact on Ramsey County Library and the penalties for breaking a current contract. Um, fully understand the impact of the city's existing infrastructure placed in the building. Um, and cost to maintain it, which we have a backup of the IT room down in that building besides here as well. Uh, we also have a shared generator that's over there that feeds the public works building as well as the community center. Um, fully understanding the impact on the city's existing infrastructure placed in the building and cost to maintain it. Fully understand the building's opportunities and challenges moving forward, flexible space, limited parking. Uh, fully understand residents' desires and willingness to support the project, um, understanding the ever-changing market forces and impacts of several new apartment complexes in the area with their own fitness centers, meeting rooms, and recreational spaces, as well as changing services and needs of the community. Um, fully understand the impact of accepting 
or declining the grant money. Um, and lastly, um, our options, which are refurbish the facility and operate it as a city-owned community center, refurbish the facility and lease it to program services meetings meeting the grant criteria, refurbish the facility to maintain the library and city infrastructure only, uh, demolish the facility with plans to relocate the city infrastructure and pay lease penalties to Ramsey County, or just flat out sell the facility. Uh, and that's kind of just a general overview. We're still learning more now with information coming out from the state as we're filing paperwork. Um, just wanted to give you a brief history of that um, so you know where we're at. Welcome to any questions that you may have, I can answer. Thank you, Brian, appreciate that update. Got any question? What is the timeline to accept or decline the grant? Um, I believe it's into next year. Uh, I don't have an exact date in front of me, I'm sorry. Is the date not specific quite yet? Is that, or do you just not know it off the top of your They haven't head? released some of the information yet, so okay. we're finding it out as it trickles in. Okay, yeah. thank you. In recent months, have you had any inquiries for the community center, either some organizations or what have you since Kokoro has departed? Yes, several. Um, I know that we've had uh, one gentleman in town has a youth group that he has, um, has expressed interest. Um, we've had a another different volleyball group than Kokoro that has looked at interest of it. Um, and there's been a couple others too. So we have that, you know, we have a theater group, local theater group that was showed interest in it as well. So it's kind of difficult because you kind of put it out there saying, are you interested in the space? And they're saying, well, what does your space have to offer? What can you give us? So it's kind of getting chicken or the egg and, you know, this is what we have. Can you use it? Or the good thing with this bonding money, if we need to do the interior, clearly we would do some reconstruction inside as well. Have you spoken to the library recently in regards to usage in the community center? They have expressed that they would like a little more space if they could. Um, and I don't know if that would mean there's a meeting room kind of west of where they are, if you could open that up for that area potentially. Um, they just said more. Um, and I know that they sometimes they'll go in uh, that corridor there and have kids there when they're reading stories and stuff to them. So. They've expressed interest. So because of this is a discussion, when I moved to North St. Paul, the community center did not exist. As in residents, it was closed. Residents, it wasn't open to residents. So as we're evaluating what we should do moving forward as the city, um, I, I haven't seen it yet. I'd like to go in and take a look at it. Is it worthwhile as we're considering our options to have a community open house is the facility even can we do that I, I, I don't know I'm just with that's open discussion certainly is a possibility sure that's one thing that you know we kind of got pushed back on our heels a little bit for not maintaining it over these years and keep putting that kind of money into it you know they were trying to save money just because we didn't have um, the interest in it like we had hoped um, but then moving forward you know the ongoing cost. This money will help, you know, refurbish the building, but once that's done, um, you can't use that money for labor, for hiring people inside there, or the ongoing maintenance of things. So um, that would have to be taken into consideration. You know, do we need two, three employees, somebody around there um, to run the place, make sure it's staying safe, uh, answering questions, um, just a lot more things to consider. I definitely um, <clears throat> echo that because, you know, to get it to where it is and to have a future, you know, that's a little bit brighter than the than the past we had. I mean, it failed as a community center in 2012 and to open it up as that. We hopefully we learn from, you know, we would understand where where the needs are of the of the community and understand where to go forward as far as is it something that 
brings value to our community and we're willing to pay for it in the long run. Mm. Indeed. I think um, one advantage that we have is um, the funding from the state and potentially the federal um, government as well. Our taxpayers already pay that, and so um, it's just an opportunity for us to kind of recoup or harvest that into investing into larger things like a community center. Um, so I think that certainly has been um, a great opportunity for us and a good, great advantage. Um, otherwise, this could go to another project somewhere else in somewhere in Minnesota. Mm-hmm. You know, the costs aren't cheap to run a community center. We have reached out to other cities as well. Um, there aren't too many community centers that make money. So, I mean, we just need to know that going in. Um, and just the ongoing costs that it, um, people at least shared with the limited amount of meetings that we've had that uh, they don't want to have increased taxes to yeah. support it. And I've talked to other ma- uh, mayors, city of, Oak, um, of uh, excuse me, Maplewood. You know, there's there's the Y now. They still own the building, but they, you know, they had to lease it out. It just didn't work the way they were, you know, as far as how it would work for the community. Um, city of Shoreview, I talked to the city of Shoreview, and um, theirs is they don't have a they don't have a downtown. They have nothing, so that's kind of their I'm not better words what they use is a loss, but it's their town square. It's everything that they have as far as that. So. My predecessor in the electric department, um, I was a superintendent back then, so the director kind of did more of the budgeting stuff, but uh, he would tell me year after year that they were putting a good 250 plus thousand dollars into the community center each year just to keep it afloat of what the costs were for it. Um, and to get it, to, when you look at it, to get it back to the way it was is the money we're getting from the from the state, can we afford to have it? The once it's fixed is is the biggest issue going forward. Because it'd be nice to get the building back, but can we actually continue to run it without a tax burden for everybody as well, with staffing and maintenance and everything else? Yeah. Yeah, I, I certainly think that's um, important to consider um, when we were doing those interviews. I think the interviews with like. Or Wold was doing the interviews with the different um, partners, and um, there was a lot of interest, and potentially maybe even leasing it out to maybe having, you know, different groups kind of run their own thing. So it may not land on three, or it may reduce the number of of potential employees that are needed if we do some of that contracting with certain services or programs or youth programs, what have you. I am excited to get more information. Right now, the only information we got that I think is it's 20 years that it has to be. So what does that look like as far as how it can be, as far as it has to be a full community center? Does it, can you rent it out to other groups? And once we get that more information, it's going to be quite uh, just to see what's entailed. I'm curious. Yeah, one other thing with the funds, we found out that you can't have an internal employee or employee of the city um, be kind of like a general to the project and try to stay on top of things. They won't reimburse labor hours for that. But if you want to sign or have a uh, third party do that, for instance, Wold, then they would be they would pay that part of it. So just a little odds and ends things that they take care of and don't take care of. I think it would be helpful for us to look at um, more community centers similarly. I think you've already done some research, it sounds like. Um, And we've also gone to the Conway Center Mm -hmm. in St. Paul. Um, That was kind of in a pretty bad situation as well. And um, they have the Sine Foundation in there. And so um, what they were able to do is with the foundation and public par- private partnerships, they were able to not only um, maintain and build out, but they were able to build out and expand their community center. And so I think they have a, a whole building that was paid for by Delta Dental. Yeah. So, huh? so that's certainly a model for us to also consider. I would think that there would need to be several different revenue streams to be practical it gets great because when we did go visit conway they're on 22 acres 
So we talked about that, and we I brought up the Google map of ours, and that was a big concern because it was just landlocked in that little small area as far as not, you know, if it was sitting on Casey Park where you had everything behind it, it's a different story, but this is, I refer to as poorly sighted because it was kind of just wedged in a piece of property we had, so we're very limited. Right. That's where kind of concern I have with that. Yeah, I could see something, yeah, like you said, Casey Lake or McKnight mm-hmm. being a little bit more appropriate for, for what an expansion could be. But, yeah, certainly um, that public-private partnership piece is, mm-hmm. is something for us to explore as well as grants. Yep. Looking forward to getting more information. Thank you for this update. It's very helpful. You bet. I was here. It was part of it I remember, part of it I don't. So... <laughs> yep. <clears throat> and that is all I have. Anybody else before? We good? Okay. Now let me go up to what I'm supposed to do up here. Just real quick, I'm I'm happy to also share with um, you all what um, what I said at the legislature when we were asking for it. So mm-hmm. I can certainly share that to um, either. I guess now sure. or um, okay. Good time. You still have your notes? I don't know if I have mine. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> what what month was that? Okay. Do you remember which month that was? <laughs> uh, 324 of 23. I, found, I just found my notes, and that's what they're dated. So I'm winging that somewhere in that vicinity. Okay. I can't find it right now. Sorry. I can share it and maybe add it to the packet or something like that. Thank you. That'd be great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if there's something pops up, let me know. I'm going to go to other business if there's any. And if, any, if you find something, let me know. Other business? Do I have to go specifically for the <laughs> workshop or just say other business? Other business? Nope. Okay. So moved. Thank you. So moved to adjourn by okay. Mr. Coles. Council Member Schwer. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all. We'll see you at uh, 630. You want my notes, Brian? Yeah. I can forward. I can forward them to you. Please.